America is a very big country and it, there are over 300 million people living in this country. And there are things that if you don't grow up here would be very strange or would sound very strange to you if you see the way it's done. I think I made a whole video about cultural shock in America when I first got here. Having lived here for a while, there are things that would have shocked me or that shocked me on day one that at this point, it's kind of the norm because now I understand why those things are done the way they are done. This video is how I see America after having lived in it for a while. Uh, I'm going to tell you some of these things as I go to the park uh, with my wife. She's back from where she was. Um, but I'm going to try and highlight those things and sort of try and walk my way through why it was strange to me in the first instance and how I sort of find the reasoning behind those things and why it does make sense to me at this point in time. So Lexis, are you ready? I want to sit down that side that we climbed up from yesterday because then you have, um, what is it called? You have the view of that side. I can't remember where it's at. I think it's around here. Yeah, this way. Okay, so one of the big things that I actually struggled with that started making sense to me now is the idea of having options in america when you want to order for food there's always gonna be a dance between like what do you want and the type of things that is available for instance if you want to order for rice they'll say what type of rice white rice or brown rice if you're ordering for bread they'll say with bread or white bread food they'll ask you the spicy level etc etc so if you're new, it can be very overwhelming. But over time, I've come to understand that in a country with over 300 million people um, that is not suffering from food insecurity, there's always going to be choices. And coupled that with the fact that you have small businesses that are enabled by a thriving economy, there's going to be a different variation, organic, um, free-range eggs. You should walk into an American store. This would make more sense, okay? There's always a wide range of options to choose from. And that can drive you really crazy if you're not very used to living in this country or having so many options. But now it does make sense to me because this is arguably one of like the richest country in the world, if not the richest country in the world. I don't know, I have to fact check that. But it makes sense that there are so many options and that you're not limited to one thing. Now, I think if I ever end up leaving this country or moving to a different country, I might struggle with the idea of not having options. Even though a couple of years ago, it's such a pain point for me because I keep getting asked, like, what type of X, Y, Z do you want when all I want is just food, right? So, how I see this country after having lived here, when it comes to plethora of options, is that it is actually important to have those options. People have dietary restrictions. People don't have money to buy, like, the top end of things. Another thing that is actually quite interesting is the idea of tipping, okay? There's nowhere else in the world, as far as I know, that build, well, I'm gonna take that back. Where I'm from, tipping is not a thing. If you go into a store in Nigeria, you buy what you need to buy and you pay, you're not obligated to give anything to anybody. It's not expected. If you do, people would appreciate you for that. In America, there's such expectation. And it's very confusing at first, but I've been, well, I started seeing it differently having lived here for a while. In the sense that if you work in the service industry, for example, in America, you don't make a lot of money. Your income is directly tied to how well you render your service and how the people that you're serving decide your tip. And in, a, in an economy that is driven, driven by capitalism, it sort of makes sense. It's not fair, but it does make sense because if you hire somebody and they know that if they put on a very nice service, they're going to get paid more, there is this incentive, so to say, to be at their best when they talk to people, to be at their best when they serve those people. So. It took me a while to understand how that works. It's not fair, I have to point out, but I understand it now. I understand it in the sense that people don't get paid, people that work in the service industry don't get paid 
enough money to sort of force them, not force, to incentivize good services such that when they talk to you or when they render a service to you, they know that the more, the nicer they are to you, the more money they make. And the way that I see it now is that while it's not fair, it sort of encourages people to offer a service, having it in mind that um, the amount of tip that they get is tied into the way they um, discuss or like interact with the customer that they are serving. If you go anywhere else in the world, I've been, I was fortunate to go to some other places earlier on this year, and you can tell that the people, the servers are not really interested in how they serve you. They show up, they do a decent job, but because they know that the tipping is not tied to their income, it's kind of like a, a like a, as it goes service. So it's not fair, but it does make sense to me at this point. Okay. Okay. So this one will shock you. And if you're seeing this clip, this is my wife right there, Alexis. Okay, cool. So this one will shock you a little bit and it's kind of revolves around you getting invited to a particular event with your friends. So in America, if you get invited to a birthday party or some sort of celebration and it's probably if it's in a restaurant or you guys have to go get food and eat outside or go to a bar it is expected that you pay for your stuff where i'm from it's the other way around if i invite you to my birthday party it is expected that i will take care of the bills yours is to just show up and hit and dine on my coin and when i first got here it didn't really make sense to me because hey, if I'm taking my time to come celebrate you, the least you can do is feed me. Because <laughs> if I were to be in my house, I'll feed myself. I don't need to spend that extra money. But now it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense in the sense that you're, I'm the one celebrating stuff. There's no reason why I should also be the one paying money for you to come celebrate me. And I, I, I started seeing it differently, honestly. It was a shock at first, but now it's no longer a shock to me because it does make sense. The way that we do it in my part of the world doesn't truly make sense. Anyway, if you're not here and you plan to move here one day, keep it in mind that if you get invited to something, you're gonna pay for yourself. Um, and you cannot expect the person to pay for you. So that's important. I, don't, I no longer see that as strange anymore, to be honest, I think it's, just an ideal thing to do as a matter of fact some people will even go above and beyond to pay for the person that is celebrating something which i think is a very nice gesture those are the things that i can think of right now and how my view ha my view has changed over the course of time based on the amount of time that i spent in the country i'm sure i'm still gonna have more things that is gonna change over time as i understand people and culture and places some more um, but that's like the by and large of the things I really want to highlight in this video. I think it's not just for people that are watching, it's also for me because over time I can come back and watch this video and see how my view of things have changed um, over time. But I'm still going to make another video that would highlight the things that I still don't get, the things that still doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, and I would make sure to link that video here when it's done. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. If you're in this country, what are the things that your views have evolved on over time? And if you're planning to move to this country, what are the things that you actually think um, that you heard in this video that is kind of different from the way you've imagined it? I will see you in the next video. But first, I would like to say that this view is amazing. I am impressed about how nice my camera is capturing that it's beautiful okay bye